I just love being able to bring these animals into my home because I hate seeing what some people do them. Because some people just see these animals as a possession. There's something to just buy and have, oh look, it's pretty, it's there, oh, but wait, I have to take care of it, I have to train it, I have to do this. And these dogs end up getting surrendered because the people didn't realize how much of a commitment they were making. You know, and I hate to see that these dogs are being punished because somebody else made a mistake. When I picked her up, she was extremely emaciated. She um, basically looked like a bag of bones. What she reminded me of was when you see the um, anthropologists when they're digging in caves and they're dusting off the bones because they've discovered something buried. That's what she looked like. She looked like someone she was just, you know, bones that someone had dusted off, a little dust, but nothing else there, maybe a little dirt around it. Um, she had a lot of sores. She had a really bad sore on her ankle, two on her hiney, where the flesh had just kind of come off and the bone had pressed, the pressure sores, I guess, is what they really are. And then um, she had a lot of scabs and a little hair missing on her hips and things like that. Then her skull, of course, if you look at pictures, you can see it's caved in because of how much weight she had actually lost. This poor girl needed rescuing. When, when she was turned into the shelter, our volunteer picked her up and took her in overnight and brought her into San Antonio to meet up with another one of our volunteers. She then drove Macy up to San Marcos to meet with me, where I then brought her home. When I got here, I went and met up with one of our volunteers, Stephanie High. She, I believe she's a vet tech at one of the emergency vet clinics down in South Austin. And I met up with her and she helped me get the wounds cleaned up and bandaged them and put on some honey wraps and a sugar wrap around her foot, which is a little bit worse. The bandages, of course, we wanna to try to keep the honey pressed onto her sores because we want it to be able to do its job. So we had to get creative and kind of wrap them around her tush so that it didn't cover up anything she needed to go potty outside. Um, of course, trying to do so, they don't stay in place all that well. So I went to Walmart and I bought some, I guess they were seven year old tights so little, little girl's tights and I cut the legs off so we turned those into little panties and I cut the hole out of the back so her tail could come out and that way she can just wear them in the house and it holds the bandages in place and then we'll take them off when she needs to go outside. And then of course because of how skinny she is, she doesn't have a lot of meat on her, as cold as it's been lately and at night and especially in the house with the tile floors and the hardwood floors, it gets chilly. So I wanted her to have a jacket or something to help keep her warm that way when she's laying down she doesn't get cold. So that's where our little camouflage fleece thing came into play. Well, we're gonna do a slow feed. She's gonna be on a schedule feeding. She gets fed three times a day. She'll be fed three times a day. She'll have snacks in between. Um, she would be happy to eat a lot more than that, but we don't want her to get sick and overeat. So we will mix a combination of canned food with dry food, and we'll mix in some extra nutrients and antibiotics and stuff for her treatments. Thank this is the you. skinniest dog I've ever Thank had. You. My um, my other foster, who is this emaciated, she she wasn't near this bad. She has an absolutely amazing demeanor, though. She is a very happy dog, regardless of her condition. She's very sweet. She knows how to sit, how to lay, how to shake, which tells me that once upon a time, she had a loving home who taught her stuff. Um, and fortunately, she never gave up hope. So she still has faith in people. She still loves people. She appears to love dogs as well. So for, for someone who is in as bad a shape as she is, she's kept a very wonderful attitude. She's a very sweet girl for her condition. <laughs> When you go through this with these animals and you just help them go from being on the edge of death to being alive, that's so alive that somebody wants to take them home and share their lives with them, it's really hard to let them go. So a couple of the other fosters, I had Milkshake for three weeks and I had Bryn for one week um, and their health problems weren't near as bad and so we didn't have as much time to get attached to them and of course we didn't go through as much with them which I think made a little bit of a difference. I, um, I have a feeling that Macy Gray is going to be very hard to let go because she, she's just such, such a sweet girl. She is this wonderful girl and she has an amazing spirit. And I know that once we make it through this process and we get her fully rehabilitated, that it's gonna be very hard to watch her leave. But I also know that she is going to absolutely love any family that she's in and that any family who adopts her will be very lucky in having her there because she is going to be an amazing dog for any family. <laughs>